a warm round of applause for our first speaker, Mr. Simon Lovell. All right, guys, well, it's great to be here. Uh, I know that some of you have traveled uh, from afar. Where's everyone come from? I'm interested to know, get you, uh, get to know you guys. San I'm from San Diego, so perfect. Where about you from? Uh, Los Angeles, California. Oh, perfect. How about you? Minneapolis. Awesome. Who's come from like the furthest away? Anyone who's come from? Ben, UK. Awesome. Cool. The first thing I want to start talking about, and thanks Tom for the introduction, is I really want to get to know uh, why you guys are here. Because I know running a business, okay, you know, I started my business back when I was, you know, six, no, 13 years old, writing uh, video games magazines and kind of handing them out. So I know what it like. Well, I know what it's like to run a business. I also know what it's like to be in a business for a certain period of time, and we start to get a little bit, you know stagnated and we want to get that extra motivation. So I'm really fascinated to know, it's a relatively small group, why you guys are here and what you mainly want to get out of this weekend. And that's really going to help me steer my conversation for you guys. As much as it's going to be about mindset, as much as it's going to be about business strategy, it's also about getting to the next level. And for some of you, that's going to be financially. And for some of you, it's going to be about getting this to the next level. For some of you, it's about more impact. You want to start leveraging your skills in a different way. Maybe there's some other personal challenges going on. So why don't uh, some of you guys share why you're here? All of the above. All of the above. Yeah, awesome. The What's the one thing that comes up for you like continuously, that, that, that voice which keeps on saying this, this same thing over and over and over again? Systemize. Systemize. Kind of Michael Gerber. Mm -hmm. He actually lives very close to me, actually, in, 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 uh, in uh, California, which is cool. He's a great guy. How about let's, uh, people put their hands up? Why are you, why are you here? Yes? I'm just finding that I'm spread really thin. I mean, like last week I put like maybe nine to five hours, you know, and so I'm getting, I love what I do, but I need to reel it in and narrow, you know, what it is my main focus is. So you said, so you said hours in. Yeah. So what are you finding because of those hours that you're putting in? I'm exhausted. Okay, so. <laughs> Self-care. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who else is perfect? That's great. Yeah. Um, I'm here just to get better overall. Okay. In what? In, in particular, anything? Um, I want to master my business. Awesome. What part of your business? <laughs> what part of your business do you want to master most? Um, duplication. 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 So taking what you've already got and replicating it. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Who else? Who's next? Let's have, uh, let's have three more. Yes? Um, I am here because I am trying to get out of my own way the whole time it sucks because I'm off island. Don't think that I can be safe to be forward. I'm looking for fear. Mm, fear of what? Um, failure or success, I'm not sure. If you did know which one, which would it be? Probably failure. Okay. What part of failure? Confidence overall or confidence in certain situations? Confidence overall or confidence in certain situations? Uh, probably overall. Okay, really? Are you not confident in other parts of your life? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. What, parts of your con what parts of your business are you really in flow with and really confident with? So do we hear that? Do we hear that? I don't feel confident. I don't feel confident overall, and I feel really confident in this. So we've got these two voices which are speaking, and that causes conflict, and that shuts us down, and that uh, disables us. And that's a very, very important. So I want to talk on that. Thank you. Someone else. Who's next? Why are you here? Yes. I'm, I'm trying to decide what I really want out of my business. Mm. When you say, I really want, oh, is it about money? Can you, let's go one deeper than that. What do you mean by that? I'm not a money motivated person, <coughs> which is funny because I'm in sales, both my day job and the gym. Um, but I like the environment. I like the, I like the gym. I like my day job. I love the activity. Mm -hmm. But getting a huge, bigger paycheck isn't the thing that motivates me. 
So you also have this conflict of, is it this, is it this? And there's also, a, for many people, there's a big conflict with this whole money conversation, which I want to talk about, which is part of me feels like I need to make money, I want to make money, and other part of me says, you know, I'm, money isn't important to me. And that's a it's called a conflicting belief, and that also shuts us down from reaching our potential, which is huge. Let's have one more. Uh, why are you here? One more, yes. Awesome, and that's really important when it comes to team. So I want to build a team. You don't just want to build a team. We want to build a badass team of people who are aligned to your mission and who are A players and you know have got you back that you can go away and they can take control of it. Anyone have a challenge with hiring and then bringing on the right people, yeah? And wanting to hold on to parts of the business where you struggle to let go because you feel like you're the best person to be doing it, <laughs> right? But the truth is that the true quality of a leader is someone who can build up another leader to be able to take that business moving forward. Now, I want to share with you, I want you guys to grab a piece of paper, and I want, on that piece of paper, if we have it kind of landscape, I, wanna, I want you to create this timeline, okay? And here you're going to put one, which is when you were born, and then up to your current age. Now, you don't have to share your age with me. Okay, so I want to wind back uh, just to share a little bit about my story and I'm going to be um, sharing with you, you want to be making notes because I'm going to be sharing with you strategy, mindset with an overall uh, message for you guys which is going to really help you moving forward. So back, at the, uh, back when I was young I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Okay, I, uh, for example, at school, I wasn't the guy that played sports, but I was the person who would write a fanzine because I used to play video games. Does anyone, anyone else used to love video games? Lemmings, cannon fodder, Mario, all of that type of stuff. That was me. So very early on, I was writing these fanzines at school, and I would be taken up to my local shops, and I would have that uh, fanzine was printed out on a computer with, by the school uh, photocopier, and they would use, the news agent would take the money and they would sell my fanzine for me. But, and this was great, this was really fun to me, but I wasn't the guy that played sports, and it was one particular event that happened when I was 13, and I went into the showers after sports, and I accidentally rubbed past the wrong guy at the age of 13 in a shower. And my life changed at that point. Does anyone ask the question, why am I here? Why am I in this industry? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Because I ask that question continuously, and I think we get caught up in our business oftentimes, and we forget the true driver of what we're doing. And then when things get difficult, we're not associate, associating to that thing that got us into the industry in the first place. So here I am, I'm 13 years old, and I go into the showers, I, I walk past this guy, he's the rugby player, he's the, the prominent person at school, and in that moment, boom, my life changes, because he said to the whole crowd of people around this amount of people, this guy touched me inappropriately, okay? And this is what happened at 13 years age, 13 years of old, 13 years of age. And it devastated my life at the time. Here I am, I'm 13 years old, I'm in the showers with all these boys, and everyone's putting their back to the wall, accusing me of something, which I didn't do, and I thought coming into school the next day that ev everything would change, but it didn't. From the age of 13 through to 16, my life was fucking hell. And it was painful. I, I had to then kind of alienate myself, not be part of the school, and I just had to be around certain people. And this was really hard for me at 13 years, at 13 years of old, 
old. And do you know what happens to someone's identity at that age, where they're not able to do the things that they want to do, where they're being alienated? It is hugely painful. And so from the ages of 13 to 16, I just put myself away. I started writing my fanzine, and I was just doing what I was doing. But I was bullied, I was tormented, and I just was crushed as a, as a young kid. And so it got to the point where I got so frustrated, I said to myself, I'm going to fight back to the bullies. And so I decided to sign up for a kung fu class. So I went up to um, my local kung fu class, and it took me three times to go in because I didn't have the courage. I had so much fear. I had so much fear of making this step. But I did it. I went in, and I met this guy called Tim. And he took me under his wing, and he built my confidence up. And he took me into the gym, and he started getting me to lift weights. And that's where my confidence started to grow. And at the time, I'd actually been, uh, you know, I'd, I'd gone through this tough spell, but I went and worked for national video games magazines. I did that from the age of 16 up to the age of uh, 21, where I worked on national video games magazines, um, and I flew around the world doing these amazing things. And uh, everything changed in my business. To cut a long story short, I lost, I lost my girlfriend at the time. I had to sell my home. I lost everything, and I was back home with my parents. And that's when I decided, or my parents actually, my mum said, son, what do you want to do with your life? Has anyone ever had that conversation? And, uh, and she, uh, she su suggested that I take my passion for training in the gym, and so I ended up going to Cyprus, and I qualified and I certified with a company called Premier Training, who were based out of the UK. And so I came back from certifying with Premier, and I was just go, go, go. I got seven clients in my first week, I was just on fire. I was this confident, young, uh, personal trainer in a big box gym. And it was great. Um, now, what happened was, and this is where I want to share a bit of the, uh, the strategy with you, which is I was working with my clients. It had been a, a couple of years in. And they were saying to me, Simon, I'm getting great results with my fitness. But what about my nutrition? And as a trainer, what I used to do was I used to eat from this lunchbox. And so I didn't have any time spare because I was working with clients back to back. So what would happen is I would be filling this lunchbox full of healthy food. I'd put in my proteins, I'd put in vegetables, and I'd have my normal breakfast and my normal, normal evening meal. And so I put together this lunchbox. And my client said to me, Simon, give me something that I can use for my nutrition. So I took what worked for me and I put it into a simple three-page document. One of the biggest business mistakes people make is do stuff just to make money. But what I did was I took what worked and I applied it to my clients. So it was working for me, it was keeping my weight down, it was keeping my energy up. So I took what worked for me and then applied it to my clients. So I put together this simple three-page document and I gave it to my clients and about a month later, six weeks later, they were coming back to me saying, Simon, this doesn't feel like a diet. This, this is great, my skin feels fantastic, my energy's up, what is it? And I said, well, it's my lunchbox diet. And it's naturally evolved. And I took this three-page document and I turned it into a 13-page document. And I put it onto my website. I simply did it. I took action. I noticed that people were getting results from it. And I took this simple concept that worked and I put it onto my website. And at the time, I, didn't, I wasn't really into marketing much. So the, the name of my business was called The Heat Fitness. I learned a lot more about marketing and business then. But that simple action of me putting this 13-page ebook on my website, it got picked up by Elle magazine. I had a phone call from this lovely young girl at Elle magazine called Sophie, and she said, Simon, I want to review your diet. And I was like, holy shit, this is 13 pages, and I'm going up against published authors. So I said, OK. So she downloaded my ebook. At the time, it was like £4.95. And uh, now, bearing in mind for magazines, because I've been in that industry, it's a three month lead time. So I didn't know what the review was going to be like. So the review came out, and this was for the little black dress uh, edition at Christmas. Of course, of course, all the magazines at Christmas time, they have their little black dress edition. So I go to WH Smith, which is in the UK. Ben will know that. Uh, and uh, I find the review of my diet, and it says, five out of five stars, the best diet ever, the best diet we've ever done. Now, bearing in mind, I had a basic nutrition uh, qualification. I did my basic PT, and I had my basic nutritional advisor. But I just took action on what worked. 
I put it on my website, and I got this, uh, this uh, magazine, L, with 300,000 readers to, uh, to review my book. So what did I do? I instantly went home, and I doubled the price on the website. And I sold about 20,000 pounds worth of eBooks at that point. At that point, I got a phone call from Penguin, and they said that they were interested in publishing the Lunchbox Diet, which was hugely exciting to me. So what happened was, uh, to cut a long story short, they messed me around, and I got frustrated because they didn't want to do my book, book deal anymore. So I had a, a, a key decision to make in that moment. Do I allow Penguin to not follow through with my, my book, or do I create energy in my system, and do I follow through and decide to commit and get a book deal? So what did I do? I phoned up publishers, and I was picking up the phone. I was picking up the phone, and I was taking action. And I was contacting these publishers, saying, hey, listen, it's been published in Elle magazine. I've had these book offers. And I started to get traction just by picking up the phone. And what happened was I, started, I got offered 25,000 pounds. I then got offered 50,000 pounds. And at that point, when I got offered 50,000 pounds for the lunchbox diet, I decided that this was so much for me now that I needed to find an agent. So I already had a 50,000 pound offer. So I took that 50,000 pound offer and I went to an agent. And I said, hey, listen, I have a 50,000 pound offer. Do you want to handle creating more from this? So I got myself an agent and uh, he created a seven kind of uh, publisher book fight for the rights to the lunchbox diet. I can remember I was training one of my clients. I was on the rower. My phone went. He knew that the phone call was coming in. And I said, I've got to take this call. Took the phone call and it was my agent. He said, Simon. HarperCollins would like to take your book off the table from the other publishers, and they're offering you £100,000 for, for, for the rights to the lunchbox diet. Do you know what I said? I said, no. I said, if they want it that badly, they'll have it for 120000 Put the phone down. He called me about 10 minutes later, and I got the rights uh, that they bought, HarperCollins bought the rights to the Lunchbox Diet in 2008. It was published in 2009. So I learned something very early on but when I got hired by um, a publisher on video games magazines, which was be persistent. And so those early lessons of being persistent really helped me with this. Now, at the same time that I was... Um, at the same time that I had the Lunchbox Diet published in 2009, I was also living these two lives. I was a DJ at the time. I was a personal trainer and I was a DJ. And I was drinking, I was smoking, I was just basically a mess. But I was young and I was enjoying the industry. And uh, I was around a, f a personal trainer's friend's house and uh, we were drinking and they, he put a little bit of uh, white powder on the, on the table. And I was a little bit naive at the time. And I took it, and it was cocaine. And at that point, my life started to go like this or like this. Now, bearing in mind, I've got 100, I'm young, I'm, I've got a 120,000 pound book deal with HarperCollins, and now I'm starting to take drugs. Every weekend, I'm getting drunk, I'm taking drugs, and I start to rack up loads of debt. Okay, I had uh, my previous, previously I was uh, kind of addicted to online gambling. And so I was, I was basically living these two lives. There was part of me that wanted to be healthy and there's part of me that wanted to, to help people and serve people and be this epitome of health. And then on the weekends, I was doing all this other stuff. I was taking drugs, I was going to dealers, I was like just a mess. I would come in like Monday morning and I would just hear these stories of people saying these things to me. And I didn't, I wasn't aware at the time, but it was all around this lack of self-worth. It was all around just me just not loving myself. And so I was just completely unaware. And it got to the point, it got so bad that um, it was Christmas, it was one Christmas time, and it was, New Year, uh, it was Christmas Eve, and I'd been partying, I was DJing, I'd been taking ecstasy, I'd been taking cocaine, and I was meant to be at my sister's at 11 o'clock on Christmas Day. Now, my sister loves me, my family loves me, and they just wanted Uncle Simon to be there at the house on Christmas Day. It was 8 o'clock in the morning, I'd 
being the last drugs I'd taken was probably six o'clock. And my, I looked in the, the, in the mirror, and my eyes were bloodshot. I was sweating, and I was like, what am I going to do? <sighs> so I got a taxi, and I went to my sister's house. And I somehow managed to pull it off. I went through, and she just wanted me, you know, Uncle Simon, to be there and to be, to be fun. So I was so drained and I was so exa exhausted from the partying. Of course, I didn't give a... At the time of doing that, the night before, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking about my family. I wasn't thinking about any of those things. Who was I thinking about? I was just thinking about me. And uh, I ended up walking upstairs and sleeping in my nephew's bed with Kitty's place. You know what uh, nephew's beds are like. Thomas the Tank Engine or superhero bed sheets. And I slept in my nephew's bed all throughout Christmas Day. I left that day ashamed of myself. And about a month later, I just had this massive calling. And it was like, basically, it was like this. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? There was this massive calling within me, which is your soul, which is that part of you going like, hey, come on, what's going on? And I fortunately, my friend from Bristol called me and he said, Simon, I've just broken up with my girlfriend. And I've got a spare room. And I was like, I'm in. And the reason I got you to write a timeline, because all of you have got a story. And along this timeline, as things are happening, there's a thing called key turning points. So for me, the key turning point that I had that changed my, the whole trajectory of my life was the key decision to change my environment and to change the people I was around. Because I knew that if I was going to continue to be in the environment that I was in, I was not going to grow. Yes, I would have made some money. Yes, I was going like, to be OK. But every Friday night, I was destroying myself. I was in this cycle, continuous cycle, and I wasn't able to get out. So the key decision for me that changed everything was to pack my bags and leave and, and decide to change my environment and change the people I was around, change my peer group. So I packed my bags, and I moved two hours away up to, from a place in, called Exeter in the UK to a place called uh, Bristol. And I got into a completely different environment of people because I knew it wouldn't trigger me. And we, uh, we, in personal development, in personal growth, we have to be aware of the things that trigger us. Because if we're not aware, we can't change those things. So I moved, and then I started to get my life back together. Not fully, but it started to change. And this was where I made another key decision. I was actually, uh, I was doing the lunchbox start. I was making decent money. I, was, I also produced and I helped develop a product called Paleo in the Box with another expert. But this is where I, start, I hired a mentor. Now, at the time that I hired this mentor, I'm going to be completely, and I will be fully transparent with you around everything around my life because I believe, and it's my belief, that if I'm fully transparent, it's going to help other people to grow. At the time that I hired my mentor, I had around between forty and fifty thousand dollars of debt, racked up on seven credit cards. That debt, by the way, was no, was entertainment. It, this was drugs. This was gambling addiction. This was pure. There was nothing I could, had to show for it. Okay. And so the challenge with debt is not the amount of debt a lot of the time, but it's the association with what the debt is. Does that make sense? Because that causes a lot of subconscious stress, and we tend, tend to push it away. So debt. Debt is not a problem. It depends on what, what debt it is. So for me, I had this, uh, this debt, but I had, I had around $5,000 uh, $5, left. Now, this mentor was $30,000 for the year. So I didn't know how I was going to make the rest of the payments, but I had this. So I invested with this mentor. It was, uh, was $30,000 for the year, and I invested my last $5,000, and I put it on a credit card. And what happened was from that mentor, as much as he taught me sales and he taught me marketing, what really happened with that mentor relationship, and this is absolutely critical if you're a coach, which is it's not necessarily the strategy, but it's the energetic exchange between you and the mentor. You will pick up their confidence. You will pick up their certainty. You will pick up like their energy. And that's why they help you to grow. Yes, I learned strategy and sales and all of those things, but it was the person that I was around. And that's why they say you are the sum of the people that you spend time with. It's the energetical exchange between you. Yes, it's the words. Yes, it's all of those things. But you, you start to gravitate and you start to, to embody them. You know, so imagine if you're spending time around people like Richard Branson, you're spending time around people like Tony Robbins, you start to become 
you know, it's not like you're becoming that person, but you're starting to really pick up on their energy and their thought patterns. And if you understand the field of energy and, and how the universe works as you start to spiritually grow, you'll understand this more and more and more. So here I do, here's what happens. I make this investment. And then what happens is my, I start to make far more money. I go from 10,000 a month to 20,000 a month to 30,000 a month to 40,000 a month, and my revenue starts to go up. But this is what happened. I said to myself, and I made the key decision, if I'm now starting to make money and I'm starting to pay off this debt, what if I've still got the bad habits of the drugs, of the gambling, of all of these things? I'm going to be fucked because I'm going to have all of this money and I'm going to basically send myself to an early grave. So I committed to putting 20% back of what I made back into me. And that's where I then invested in working with Tony at the highest level. I invested working with people like Byron Katie. I traveled to India. I traveled and did ayahuasca in Peru because I made this commitment to deal with my shit at a deep level so that I wouldn't have these habits, so that I would become a new level of leader because I had this calling to serve. I had this calling to help more people. I had this calling to develop myself. But there was so much that I knew that was not right. The relationships that I was going into, the business partnerships that I was going into, the drinking, the gambling, like, I didn't want any of that. I wanted it to be gone. And so what happened was, my business, like <laughs> seriously guys, it's ridiculous. My business just went like, like the, from the investments in the self-development, my business went from like this to like this in revenue and my impact. I jumped from 60,000 a month to 100,000 a month in one month. And that didn't come from strategy. It came from me overcoming my fear. Okay, because the biggest thing that's gonna hold you back is your fear and your limiting beliefs. If you think that it's strategy, it, guys, it's not, it's just not. What's, the beliefs that got you to the numbers that you're at now, okay, and where you are in your business, it's radically different. It's the beliefs that you need to have to get yourself to the next level. So what I want you to write down is I want you to draw this timeline for yourself and start to mark, mark off the key turning points. You don't have to do it right now, but I also want you to draw two circles. In this circle, I want you to write down your current beliefs that you have right now about yourself and your business. And then in the right one, what, do you, what are the beliefs that you need to have to get you to the next level? So for example, I used to think and have the beliefs that I'm not good enough. I can't do this. What if this? Do you want to know the shift that got me from 60,000 a month to 100,000 a month, what that, what shifted? Worrying what <laughs> others think. When I, dis when I dis dissolved the, the, the fear of what other people thought, that's what shifted me. Why? Because I started to take more action. I started to become more relentless. I started to completely shift everything around my business. And do you know what started to happen with the results of my clients when all of this started to shift? My, the results of my clients blew up to a whole, new, a, whole new, a whole new level. Because as my beliefs started to change, as my identity started to change, the energetical exchange between my clients started to change because of their self-belief started to change. So this is what I believe around the industry. You've got fitness. You've got nutrition. And then you've got mindset. Most of the fitness industry has their fitness qualification. A, very, a smaller amount has their nutrition. And I believe that it's a ridiculous amount that don't have their nutrition when they should have, in all honesty. Because what plays the biggest results in terms of weight loss? But where the industry is going, not where it is, is with the, this combination. I'll tell you now. Because why? More people are looking for more. 
why is there an increase in meditation? Why do you think there's an increase in yoga studios? Why do you think there's an increase in more of a holistic approach and all of those things? It's because consciousness is rising, which people are looking more than to get physically fit. And I use this analogy. What's the point if, what's the point if you're shredded but you beat your girlfriend up? Is that fit? It's not fit at all. What is, what is fit is having self-care and being emotionally fit, okay? The, the fulfillment that I get is when I've reconnected personal trainers, you know, fitness experts, nutrition experts with their family members, when they've ended bad relationships because they're staying in them, uh, in them for too long. Because here's the truth, when you're in a business that you're in and you're expending energy every single day helping other people, you've only got a certain amount of energy in your system. Therefore, if you're in a bad relationship because you're codependent, your energy is already down, which means that you don't have any energy. So when you're saying to yourself, I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed, it's not the amount of time. It's not. It's not the amount of time you're spending. It's the, fa the fact that you're depleted of energy. Everything is energy. Okay? So you're giving, you're giving. So right now, I'm here and I'm serving you and I'm loving it and it's energizing to me, but it's, all, it's also I'm giving my energy to you which means that I need to fill myself up again. So the biggest problem in the industry also is self-care. Those that are pain the most want to help people the most, which means that you naturally want to help people. But that also creates a bit of a problem. You end up staying into f f the things for too long. You hire the staff for too long and you don't let them go. You don't set boundaries for yourself. So if you want to take yourself to the next level in your business, you have to look at how you're managing your thoughts, what your identity is, and all of that's going to tie in to your bottom line, to your profits, and most of all, your impact. Because when I'm training leaders and when I'm training people to get to the next level, the number one focus before strategy is the self-care of the leader. Because if the leader isn't in tip-top condition, that spills down through the company. Someone mentioned culture earlier. Someone mentioned mission. That's so important as part of a business. But if the, if the leader isn't constantly evolving and growing, not just physically, but emotionally, developing, growing, all of these things, that's going to spill down through the whole culture. Because even if your clients, even if your staff it's not, they're not hearing it, they're feeling it from, it from you. They're feeling it from you when you're stressed. They're feeling it in every word that you say. You don't have to say it to them, they're going to know it. And so here I was, and I'm, I'm not the same person that I was three years, alert, three years ago, let alone three months ago, because I've committed to personal growth in all different areas. And as a result, my business has just gone up and up and up. And I've continued to impact more and more people. So I know for some of you, you're in this room right now and you've got skills that you're not leveraging online. You've got a passion for something where you're not following through through fear. And I wanna have this discussion with you guys. You are in rela personal relationships that aren't supporting you, that you're tolerating. You're in a, in a, you have certain staff members that potentially in the future this could happen or it could be happening now that aren't right for your business. But once you master your mindset, once you master you, that's going to affect everything. So let's spend a few moments, because I want to make, I want to make this a presentation as well as a, uh, uh, a workshop too. Who knows, I'm just interested to know from you guys here, who knows what their key turning point was? Like when everything started to shift. So for me, it was moving out of the area that I was living in. And it was here. So if you've got the timeline from the age of one through to where you are, where you are now, who knows what their key, who knows what their key turning point was where everything shifted? Yeah. Um, just a few years ago, my daughter was born and the day of my divorce, I was diagnosed with um, 
asking for your answer, and I, because I had left everything I owned, I was living in people's basements, and so that was my turning point. How many people know that story? All my clients know. For your cl what about the people that aren't your clients? For friends do, but no one outside of my circles. Why? I don't know. I think because the background of that is uh, familial, like a lot of family issues and stuff like that, that I am afraid to put out there because I don't want to offend anyone. Worry and what others think. Here's the thing, guys. Here's the truth. I'll uh, be very brutal around it. Your story, whatever your story is, is the reason why you're here. You have to understand that. What's going to take you to a whole new level is sharing that story and making it your keynote, Make, sharing it on your Facebook Live videos. What if that story stops someone from taking their own life? Would that be worth it aside from the worrying what other people are going to think? Yes. See, the biggest problem we have in life is thinking that anyone else's opinion matters. It doesn't because you're, what's happening is you're fearing judgment from someone else, but you're judging them. Because what if they said, do you know what? That was an amazing part of your life that I'm so inspired that you're willing to share that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we don't move forward and we don't, cr we don't um, create the impact that we can create because we feel like someone else is gonna think something, but that's not true. And I've had people say, I'm so sorry you went through that, and I'm like, it's the best thing that ever happened to me, because I, I was a pro athlete, I've had a ton of knowledge and background, two master's degrees, and I had no confidence in myself to take those things and cultivate them. Your story that's here, this painful point in your life, that's your calling. Does that make sense? That's, that's the story. That's the thing that's going to get you on TV, and like, that's the reason why you're here. If that's your key turning point, just like that was for me, the reason why I do what I do is because I wasted so much of my life. I was a late starter, right? I, I, I mean, I grew massively in the past five years, but through those early ages, like, I'm helping people now in their early 20s, like, massively change their lives. I have a, one of my coaches, Sophie, and she's so young, she's 21, and she's gone through all this shit, and she's, like, working with my clients and getting them breakthroughs, and, and she's so, like, young, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm 38 and I want to like, I want to drag other people up through my story and my pain, right? So you, you got to, you, you can't make this about you. You have to make it about like, how many people am I screwing over because I'm not sharing my story, right? Who else knows that, that key turning point? Yes. It's kind of two, twofold. Um, in terms of the last job I had, where well, I suddenly made less money the longer I worked there. It made me start, you know, start doing my business out of the back of my truck that built to be what we do as been eight, uh, nine years ago. Um, but a different shift that I know my, my business has been stagnant for the last several, uh, probably about nine months to a year. My wife, we went through a really tough transition in life, um, and I didn't realize how much it affected me emotionally and, and, and you know, physically. So for the last eight, nine months, I haven't been able to train. I'm fasting about all kinds of stuff, facing all these different things. And our business is going for right along with my energy. Right? The speed of the lead, you know, the speed of the lead is the speed of the team. Right? And so with with the gym, the other the other side stuff, all that's been on on because my energy has been hard. Right. My energy has been because for the first time my, my identity has been most of us in our health and our fitness and I'm bad at I've never been. I'm, I can't train like I haven't played basketball. So all these things I'm not able to do has affected me physically that I'm not able to be where I'm at. And so it just, you know, God has given us a revelation in the last few weeks, actually, about the emotions and how they've been affecting my body. Mm -hmm. And it's not the surgery, it's not the this and that, it's the stress. Right. And so that shift now of recognizing, even, you know, as you've been saying, the shift of everything's been stagnant because I've been stagnant. You know, my energy hasn't transferred over the right way. Well, I'm normally this motivational, this and get people moving, all kind of stuff, but I've been on stagnant. So that's been a shift that it has to turn. You know, worry about. 13 things that I know are going to be great ideas 
and I get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, and nothing next to me. So we're, we're hearing, I'm hearing certain words here, okay? Worry. What else did he say? Stress. Stress. What else? Stagnation. What did he say? Stagnant. Stagnant. Energy. Energy. What else? Emotion, pain. So, what are you doing for self-care daily? Uh, prayer, but uh, I'm just starting to recognize the pain that you on something. Really, I have to do it. kind of let it go. Okay. So here's the thing, guys. Every, every thought... Okay. Every thought that you have that you repeat in your brain, okay? Every single thought, I'm not good enough, 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 I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. Team, 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 whatever it is, every single thought that you repeat, okay, creates a belief system in you. That's what it, how a belief system is created, okay? Then, from that belief system, creates an identity of who you are. So, who would like to know how to change all of this? <laughs> right, because guys, do, do you think that, do you think that the, the, the drug taker, the person with $50,000 of debt, the person that was self-sabotaging, partying at the weekends, would be able to grow a million dollar company in 18 months and be able to serve all of these people and be able to do what he's doing now. No, I, it's not possible because of the belief system that I had back then. And that's why I said to you that what's gonna take you to the next level financially, emotionally, in your relationship, fulfillment. Every one of you here wants fulfillment. That's what you want. You wanna be happier and you wanna be fulfilled, okay? Now, in order to get that, you've got to start to change your thoughts, you've got to change your belief systems, and you've got to have a different identity. So the question is, what does my identity need to be to, the, to get myself to the level that I need it to be, not where I am now? Because even, like for me and for everyone, it's got to change. I've spent time with billionaires who... I, I was with a... I was, with a, I, was with, uh, I was in Canada, and I was with a guy with 700 million. And we're in his house, and we're on this lake, okay? And we're, and over the other side of the road, <laughs> over the other side of the lake, there's a guy worth eight billion. And the guy worth 700 million, do you know what his thoughts and his uh, stress is? I don't have as much as him. So guys, it doesn't matter what level you're at, okay? It's how you're processing your thoughts and what your identity is. I want you to write down on a piece of paper this, okay? I want you to write, this is going to be so important for you guys, seriously. What's the, big, what's the biggest thing that you're ashamed of? What's the biggest fear that you have? What's that thing that, that you've, tucked, you've tucked down into your subconscious that's really holding you back? What's the thing that you're ashamed of? What's the thing that you know your biggest fear? And this is where you need to get brutally honest. Because when I shifted my life and I shifted my business and I've helped other people to do the same, it's because I've unplugged these things that were holding me back. I dealt with the drugs, I dealt with the debt, I dealt with all of those things. And because I freed up that energy from within my system, my whole life went to a whole new level. So what's the thing that you're ashamed of? What's the thing, that you're, what's your biggest fear? And what's that thing that you just, you just keep, that you know just keeps on holding you back? It, and I've had examples of this. I'm ashamed that I cheated on my partner. Um, I feel like a fraud. I don't feel, I don't feel good enough. I'm ashamed that I did this in the past. Because until you release that energy, until you release that energy, and until you start to unblock some of these things, 
you're not going to free up the space for you to be able to get to the next level. So I want you just, just for, for you to spend three or four minutes and really think about that. And I want you to write on a piece of paper and I want you to screw it up in a, in a or t uh, fold it up. And then I'm going to come around and collect them. Don't put your name on it. This is private for you. Okay, so this will be good for now. Thanks. All right. So let's see what's coming up for you guys. Yeah, you can bring it if you if you come in now. You can bring it to the front for me. Good. So I'm not going to have time to read all of these, but I, am I, I will be reading them all personally. The biggest thing I'm afraid of is being a failure, losing my business and being looked like as a failure. Biggest shame, um, being an overweight trainer. Um, biggest fear, public speaking. Disappointment, failure. Can't read this one. That's probably mine. I don't talk to my mum and uh, my dad and mum because they are abusive. Not being able to provide a complete family structure for my daughter. Biggest fear of messing up and success. Fears, fear of what others think of me. I read that one. Judgmental thoughts of what others think. Dying poorly, not accomplishing my purpose. My marriage to a wonderful man falling apart because I cheated. Ashamed that, uh, that I'm living a lie. Coaching people on how to live when I secretly struggled with an eating disorder. So... Guys, here's the truth. We've all got our shit, okay? We've all, we, every single one of us has things that we're going through. And it doesn't matter what level you're at, okay? People are gonna have struggles. But in order to, sh in order to shift and make a, make a alteration where you free up this energy, there's a number of things I wanna quickly talk to you about. Number one, your self-care cannot be a secondary thought. It has to be a priority. What are some practices of self-care? Meditation for me has been the most important practice. Why? Because meditation helps calm your thoughts and it helps you tap into your intuition. It also helps you become more self-aware. So recently I gave up drinking alcohol. I don't have any of the drugs. My drugs are way in the past. I don't have any debt, none of those things. Why? Because I've started to do the practices that most people won't do, okay? So in meditation, it helps center you, it helps calm you, it helps you become more aware and for you to start to reprogram your thoughts. So one of the great things in meditation, I don't have time to do it today, but it's not about the meditation, but it's what you do in the meditation that really helps. Okay, because the truth is, all of this, in order to change your identity and start to let some of these things go, for example, for some of you who've written the things on the form, you need to forgive. You need to be able to let certain things go. For you to be able to do that, you've got to start changing your thoughts around it and you've got to start adjusting the story. My sister and my mum didn't speak for seven freaking years because it was one story that held them back. 
I didn't have a relationship for seven years because of one story that girls don't like guys with no hair. It's, it's kind of funny, but it's fucked up. What is the story that's holding you back? Because in order to break through to the next level, okay, if, you, if you've got someone with a plateau in coaching and you've got a client that's plateauing and you're plateauing in your business, there's a story that's stopping you from breaking through to the next level. What's the story? So my sister and my mom, they had one event that happened where under, under a stressful moment, my mum left for the, UK, for the States and my sister was in the UK and in that moment my sister said, said you're abandoning me and, when, and I don't want you to be part of my family anymore. For seven years. Until through self-development, a program called Landmark in fact, has anyone been through Landmark or done Landmark? Right. They now have the best relationship ever. What's going to give you fulfilment and get your clients to the next level is mastering your mindset, mastering your thoughts, mastering your belief system, shifting your identity so that you can get to the next level. Now what I've done for you guys is there's an envelope. And on that envelope, there is a, uh, you can open it, and on that envelope is, uh, is my personal phone number. And I'm gonna be here for the next two days, and if you, any of you guys need to have a conversation with me, just send me a text message and say, hey, I need to talk. Or in the future, if there's something that's coming up for you, now, you may have it of right now and get compelled. Or maybe it's in the future and you're just like, hey, um, like, uh, guys, here's the, Tom is, a, Tom is amazing and he's been a, um, just an amazing, um, amazing person. So what I wanted to do was, and I don't normally give out my personal number, but I just really wanted to, um, I just want to help people overcome more of those things because I, I can teach you email marketing. I can teach you uh, copy. I can teach you um, sales. I can teach you marketing. I've done all of it. I do all of it in my business. But I know that the thing that's going to get you to the next level, as much as all those things are great and you're going to learn a lot of those things, for me personally, with why I'm doing what I'm doing, I know that the next level and all of those things are going to be activated when you are in the best place, when your energy is freed up, and when you are centered, when you're calm, and you've let some of those things go. So if any of you guys need to touch base with me over the next couple of days, I'm here for you, and maybe you just need to actually communicate some of those challenges and have a, a conversation. And if we are going to have a conversation moving forward, it's probably going to be raw and honest and brutal. Thank you. Well, thank you, Simon, so much. So, um, uh. poor Simon, for speaking here at the Master Your Business Workshop. Wow. Thank you so much. That, that really does it on me.